Hello, and welcome to, to, to today's episode. Today we're going to cross a line that people will not want me to cross, and we're going to talk about a very taboo subject with regards to ME-CFS. And that is the subject of people having this condition or, or identifying as having this condition and using their chronic situation as a way to guilt trip manipulate others. Many people, not just with MECFS, okay? People that are, if you've ever seen the show 600 Pound Life, they engage in this routinely. They use their situation to basically guilt trip other people into taking care of them, into coddling them, into enabling them, into making them feel better by exploiting others. MECFS is full of people who use this guilt trip technique, which is a playbook, by the way, to raise funds for their for themselves. You know, I have no problem doing if somebody has a you know, GoFundMe account, and they need help. I get that. But a lot of people have GoFundMe accounts. They have Amazon accounts. They have this account. They have that account. They want people to buy them organic oatmeal body cream. I mean, it's... I'm not even going to go into those ones. And the families feel obligated to take care of these people. You know, we see this with drug addicts all the time. Parents feel guilty, so they keep giving them money. They keep taking care of them. I know a lady with, well, she just passed away, actually, and she was notorious for this. She actually has had um, kidney failure. So people with cancer do this. People with... Asperger, you know, autism do this. People with weight problems do this. Anybody with a with a dependency, you know, people with with mental health issues do this. People with anxiety. You remember Gabby Paterno or whatever her name was? You know, she's the one that got killed in Wyoming or Utah earlier in the year and you know, they were stopped by the cops and the first thing she did is pulled out her oh my anxiety playbook, you know, and Everybody wanted to feel so sorry for her, even though she hit the kid. Um, granted, it shouldn't have happened. But she didn't know how to deal with her problems because everybody had enabled her throughout her life to make excuses for her challenges. You know, that's one thing I don't do is make excuses for myself or for other people. I'm very straightforward. I'm very direct. And people don't always like that. Well, like my other videos have shown, I've kind of, you know, Whitney and I have been sick the same time. And, I mean, we're within a couple of months of each other. For those of you that don't know who Whitney is, I'll, it, this is his face, this is his, po this is his website, okay? So I'm not showing anything that's not public information. I'm not disclosing anything Whitney doesn't want you to see. Hi, my name is Whitney DeVoe, and I have severe chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalomyelitis. And what's funny about old Whitney here, you'll notice everybody around Whitney kind of does what Whitney wants. You know, that's the problem with with chronic conditions. A lot of people with chronic conditions, they surround themselves with people who enable them. You know, people say, but Whitney has a feeding tube. He has this, he has that. Yes, but so do people who have eating disorders. And, you know, a person with bulimia, for example, they may have a feeding tube. 
Their bulimia was not because they were sick of a physical condition. They were sick from a mental health condition. You know, and what's more, when you read Whitney's post, Whitney, by the way, is a very good writer. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to knock Whitney on that at all. But Whitney is a manipulator. He manipulates those around him. He manipulates those that listen to him. He gets you to feel sorry for him. And you do. But when you look at how Whitney writes, the one thing you will notice is he is using guilt tripping and manipulation as his technique. Another person, let me go up here and... Well, the people on My 600 Pound Life are a perfect example of this. You know, anybody who watches this show knows, not everybody, there's some real fighters on this show. Don't get me wrong. There are some really good people on here. And there are really good people in the MECFS community. But there's also a lot of people who are just, fr frankly, you know, what the doctors say about you. Let me go up here. For people that remember this girl, her name's Tammy. She's the one that's on the Thousand Pound Sister Wife episode. She uses guilt tripping and manipulation and all that to a T. She is a master at it. Her and Whitney share this technique. Here's another one that I love. I've dealt with him on more than a few occasions. His name is Walker. Now let me scroll back here a little bit, see if we can get his picture. Yeah, that's not the one. Oh, here we are at the fundraiser. Okay, we're at the uh, GoFundMe fundraiser. Understand, I'm not shaming anybody. This is public information. People do not need to. People can tell me to shut up all they want. But the fact is, I am trying to point out what is out there that is true. You are being exploited. When we look at Walker, okay... He's raised $36,000. Here's the most recent update. So, you know, sadly, we are sorry to write that Walker's health has not improved. He has also developed new and disturbing symptoms. As you probably read, the fusion surgery failed, as well, I kind of knew. And he'll need a revision surgery in the near future. In March, Walker started having vision problems. And he's seeing a whatever and visits with a, you know, whatever. Um, he's once again sensitive to extreme sound and high levels of pain and all this stuff. You know what? Walker is one of these people. When he first start, came on the scene, I know Jennifer Brea put a big thing about him out there. You know, Jennifer is welcome to mention me anytime she wants. But... I'm, I'm not requesting or begging for funds here, so I don't have to, you know, deal with my mental health issues. Walker, when Jennifer Brea went out and got her little neck brace, Walker went and got a neck brace. When Jennifer Wa Brea got a wheelchair, Walker gets a wheelchair. You know, whatever Jennifer Brea says, Walker contracts. I mean, it's it's spectacular and it's magic that way. And by the way, for anybody that doesn't know who I am, I'm the one that made the comment about Jennifer Brea that she wears that wheelchair like a fashion accessory. Now you can put a name with a face. And I meant that. I still do. But you, you're welcome to go to Walker's little GoFundMe page and, you know, like these people over here, send him $50, $20, $100. Doesn't really matter. You know, you can go over here to Whitney also and chuck him a few dollars. I mean, you know, read some of his quality poetry. And like I said, he's actually a very good writer. And what's more, Walker's a good writer too. But what Walker and Whitney both do is they use guilt tripping as a way to manipulate people to feel sorry for them. As do numerous other people that hide behind these MECFS Facebook groups. Now, 
Let me see if I can pull this up here. Guilt tripping. What is guilt tripping? Creating a guilt trip in another person may be considered to be manipulation in the form of punishment or perceived transgression. A manipulator suggests to the consciousness victim that he or she does not care enough, is too selfish, or has it easy. This usually results in the feeling bad, keeping them in a self-doubt, that's the person that's being exploited, anxious, and in a submissive position. This is very common in people that have codependency issues. Do I believe... Whitney is sick. Yes, I do. Do I believe Jennifer is sick? Yes, I do. Do I believe the mental health aspect has superseded them and basically become their lifestyle in a way? I think evidence has, has been shown over the years that this is very, very likely. Now, I could be totally wrong, but I, I don't think so. And I don't say this to be mean. I say this to be downright truthful. Let me look at one more thing up here. You know, we got the Emmy action here. I believe this was Jennifer's program. And, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't want to pick on Jennifer. I, I, I respect what she, she did. I respect a lot of the things she stands for. But she has fallen into this pattern that so many others have where they allow their, their challenges to really just become the dominant force. You know, here she is in her wheelchair, and here's pictures of socks and shoes and everything. And You know, you got all the people in t-shirts and wheelchairs, and, you know, if you're going to be the face of this, okay? And, and this is where I'm going to get a little softer in my tone. Let me go back to where you can see me here. Okay, now I've angered everybody. Sorry about that. Not really. Okay with that. Everybody needs to understand. If you want to help people, you sometimes have to help them stand up. I think Jennifer has done an amazing job. I really do. But she has, you know, Omar has been, at times, easily pushed around, as has been demonstrated in the movies. You know, a lot of times, you know, just like with Tammy, she pushes her sister around. You know, we may all look at Whitney and say, oh, that poor thing. But you know what? There are times his family, I, I can almost guarantee, I don't know this for a fact, but I know that situation very well. And a lot of times the, the families are put in a, in a situation where there's nothing they can do because the individual with the condition or the situation becomes this dominating force of demand. You know, I know a lady, she's 82 years old. She has a 56-year-old daughter living with her who... Pops pills and drinks wine all day. 82-year-old woman still working full-time. Daughter's on SSI. Why is she on SSI? Is she sick now? Yeah, but she was a partier. You know, she, she, she partied her life away. And then when she wasn't able to, you know, be the, the attractive girl in the room... 
she lost her leverage. You know, a lot of people, they manipulate other people. They become the burden to other people. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you get cancer, there's, you shouldn't ask for help. I'm, I'm, I'm with that. But you shouldn't hurt the people who are trying to help you. You know, when you look at Tammy from a thousand pound life or whatever it is, she's very manipulative. She's very demanding. She's very self-centered. She uses guilt trip like nobody's business and she doesn't care who she hurts. You know, Janet and Ron may be nice people, but they're pushovers. They really are. And their son knows this. You know, everybody gives in to Whitney. Send, send Whitney to me for a week and see what happens. I think you'd probably see a change. Don't send me Whitney, please. <laughs> I'd be throwing five gallons of water on his dumb ass every day. Because that's the way it works sometimes around here. It's not that we're being mean. We're being effective. We're getting people's attention. People wonder, why do you call people stupid and pathetic? Because I call myself that every day. You know, I don't know any dumbass bigger than me. That's how I overcame. I took accountability. I took responsibility. I stopped playing the poor me mindset. And I started engaging in an effective way. You know, there's another guy out there. I'm not going to mention his name. He's kind of well known. Um, I think his name, I'm going to mention, I think his name's Winston. Once again, a great writer. Wonderful writer. Plays the guilt trip. Manipulation. Poor me. Poor me. Poor me. You know, I'm not real sympathetic to people that play the poor me card. Because I know that playing the poor me card will not get you out of the prison that you're in up here. People with post-traumatic stress disorder have a condition that was caused not by a physical issue, but by a psychological one. MECFS, toxic neuroencephalopathy, which is the chemical variety which I represent, okay, is a brain injury. It is the equivalent of a traumatic brain injury. It is not a psychological condition. However, it does present psychological challenges. And oftentimes those psychological challenges can over become the dominant force of a condition. I don't do these videos to hurt. I really don't. But I do them to show example after example after example of what it's going to take to get you focused and out of that prison, which is your bedroom, the game system, the, the excuse-laden playbook. The poor me syndrome doesn't fly with some of us. And we know how destructive it can be to those that surround them, that you surround yourselves with, who you claim you care for. Get up, do something, take a shower, 
You know how many people just wallow in filth all day and they feel bad about themselves? Get up. Take a shower. Is it hard to do? Yeah, might be. Understand, I overcame paralysis. So when you tell me it hurts and it's hard to do, I'm not buying it. Because as somebody that was paralyzed from the neck down, I figured it out. No excuses. For people that don't know, I also have Guillain-Barre, the variant of Guillain-Barre called acute motor axon neuropathy. And you're welcome to look that up. It's a, kind of a unknown condition. And I actually think there's a lot of people who have ME-CFS who also have Guillain-Barre or they were misdiagnosed when, they, when the symptoms were present. Um, but a lot of people also need to look into mitochondrial disease, which I also test positive for. And so I have neurotoxic encephalopathy, mitochondrial disease, and I have acute motor axon neuropathy, full peripheral neuropathy in all my extremities. I can't feel the ground and my hands don't feel. That's why I have to voice type and sometimes the words come out wrong. You know, it's really hard to make adjustments when you voice type everything. I don't actually, my hands don't function correctly. I know people make will tease me about saying spelling words wrong. Well, there's there's a reason is I, I don't have function really in my hands and stuff. So I have to voice type things. I get what you're going through. I really do. And I don't ever want people to think I don't share what you're going through. You know, in a previous video, I I explained the reason why I do what I do and the way I do it. It, it just makes me comfortable. You know, I found that it's, it's effective. You know, when I was having my challenges during those early years, you know, this, is, this was the approach that certain people used with me that were most effective. I work with young people that have Asperger's as well and, you know, Down syndrome and you know, my approach to them is a lot different than their families are used to. Their, their families get really, really short with me. And what's ironic is the, the young people, they don't because I'm actually talking to them in a way. It might seem disrespectful, but I'm talking to them like adults. And we're getting through to them and we're actually seeing some good progress. Don't ever, you know, these Facebook groups, and I, I know I'm rambling right now, but I think it's important to say, you know, if you're listening this long, you're gonna listen anyway. I mean, the likelihood is most people shut this video off at two minutes, like they always do. You know, when I tried to speak in Facebook groups, they just told me to shut up and, sh and, and say nothing. And instead of inquiring why I, I think and say the way I do. You know, I've learned over the years that if people can have a discussion with one another, they can usually come to appreciate one another. When I've reached out to Whitney over the years, he's, he's done exactly what he does. He, he blocks people that that don't play his game. And that's what people with, who engage in this type of behavior do. Anybody that says anything, you know, you shouldn't take that many medication. You shouldn't be swigging pain pills and wine. You know, the people don't want to hear that who swig pain pills and wine. But they need to hear it. I'm never here to hurt. I'm never. You know, you can reach out, send me an email. It's right there on my on my page. 
I don't share who my, my name is. And there's a specific reason for that. But, you know, people know who I am. I mean, I'm not... Not real hard to find. <laughs> <clears throat> but there's some crazies out there. And... These crazies have pushed the limits a few times. So we'll just leave it at that. Sorry, I'm ready to cough. My pneumonia is coming back. Um, do not hate what I say. Listen to what I say. Look, look in my eyes and say, is this a guy that's, that's a bully or is this a guy that wants to see people who are in this situation not be in that situation. Thank you for everything. Keep watching, keep watching, keep complaining, I don't care. I allow all comments. I don't, unless you're swearing, I don't allow that. But if you're, you know, you're commenting with a legitimate comment, Please, slam me, criticize me, challenge me, use me as an example of how not to do things. I don't care. I'm doing what I know worked for me to get out of that room and walk out of those hospitals under my own power. Till next time, thank you for everything. We'll see you on the next go-round. And that one will be even more interesting.